Welcome to Colonial Church Worship Online. My name is Aaron Roberts, and I'm so glad you're connecting to worship with us today. As we get going today, we're doing something a little new. Uh, these last few weeks, rather than me giving you a bunch of website addresses and email addresses, we have one place where you can go now to, to make an offering, to read our announcements, to find out what's going on, to sign up for activities. And that is at ColonialUCC dot updates dot church. If you go out to that website, or you can, um, it should be on screen now, that should also help you to just get involved in our church community. We'd love to have you. I have just a couple announcements. One is that next Sunday, we're, is going, our Sunday school is going to start meeting again and in person. And we're looking for some volunteer teachers to come in and help to lead the lessons. And if that's something that you could do every month or so, that would be wonderful. So please let us know if you could do that. Also, this is big news. We, have, we may have a candidate as a potential associate minister. And the admin board has met with this person, and the council will be doing so fairly soon. And there, honestly, there isn't much I can say, so stay tuned. But I will say this. I really like this person, and I think that you would too. And, and finally, Kansas City has an unfortunate distinction about being one of the most heavy human trafficked places in the country. And this week begins Search KC, which is an effort to help law enforcement both find and find mostly its missing children and get them to health, help and safety. And so here's how it works. You volunteer online. All of this is in our announcements online. You volunteer online, and there's a training, and you put into a group um, to go out and to do. You go to different locations, and you just simply hand over pictures of kids that are missing. And here's the deal. Every year in Kansas City, dozens of young people who are missing are found. This is a life-changing thing to do. You work only one or two shifts for a few hours, but it, may, it can save a life. So if this is something you could help out with, the deadline for signing up is almost right now on this, this weekend. So please follow that link and help out if you can. Our fairy tale scripture mashup today is the story of Hansel and Gretel with Psalm number one. So Hansel and Gretel's dad, nice guy, who goes along with a plan to kill his kids twice. And it's certainly not clear to me how they ever got to happily ever after. So today we're going to take a, a good look at the woodcutter. There may be a lesson there for all of us as we make choices. And I'm really pulling that our choices will be better than his. And so in that hope, let's worship. Last weekend at Jim Matson's memorial service, we called ourselves into worship in this way. Will you join me in those words now? Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your legacy. Today, we're going to be considering whom and what we choose to make part of our lives. Take a moment now to think about a person who brings light to your life. Lord, your teaching is a lamp for our feet, a light for our path. Amen. Once upon a time, right by a great forest, dwelt a poor woodcutter with his wife and two children. The boy was called Hansel and the girl Gretel. And they had little to eat, and once, when great dearth fell upon the land, they could no longer procure 
even daily bread. Now, as the woodcutter tossed about in his anxiety, he groaned and he said to his wife, what is to become of us? How are we to feed our poor children when we no longer have anything even for ourselves? The righteous person doesn't follow wicked advice, doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the disrespectful. Instead of doing those things, these persons love the Lord's instruction, and they recite God's instruction day and night. I'll tell you what, husband, answered the woman. Early tomorrow morning, we will take the children out into the forest where it is the thickest. There, we will light a fire for them and give each of them one more piece of bread. And then we will go to our work and leave them alone. They will not find their way home again, and we shall be rid of them. No, wife, said the man, I will not do that. How can I bear to leave my children alone in the forest? The wild animals would soon come and tear them to pieces. Oh, you fool, she said. Then we must all four die of hunger. You may as well plane the planks for our coffins. And she left him no peace until he consented. But I feel very sorry for the poor children all the same, said the man. They are like a tree planted by streams of water, which bears fruit at just the right time and whose leaves don't fade. Whatever they do succeeds. That's not true for the wicked. They are like the dust that the wind blows away, and that's why the wicked will have no standing in the court of justice. Neither will sinners in the assembly of the righteous. The two children had not been able to get to sleep because of their hunger. And when they had heard what their stepmother had said to their father, Gretel wept bitter tears and said to Hansel, Now all is over with us. Be quiet, Gretel, said Hansel. Do not distress yourself. I will soon find a way to help us. And when the old folks had gone to, gone to sleep, he got up, put on his little coat, and opened the door below and crept outside. Now, Hansel found some stones that glowed in the moonlight. And as they were led into the forest, he left a trail so that when they were stranded, they could find their way home. The couple decided to give it another go to get rid of the children. And this time Hansel uses bread to make a trail. And it is eaten up by the birds. And they are lost in the woods until they find a little house. And when they approached the little house, they saw that it was built of bread and covered with cakes. But the windows were of clear sugar. We will set to work on that, said Hansel, and have a good meal. I will eat a bit of the roof, and you, Gretel, can eat some of the window. It will taste so sweet. Hansel reached up above, and he broke off a little piece of the roof to try how it tasted. And Gretel leaned against the window and nibbled at the panes. Then a soft voice cried from the parlor, Nibble, nibble, nah! Who is nibbling at my house? The children went on eating without disturbing themselves. Hansel, who liked the taste of the roof, tore down a, a great piece of it, and Gretel pushed the whole round part of the window pane out and sat down and enjoyed herself. Suddenly, the door opened, and a woman as old as the hills, who supported herself on crutches, came creeping out. Hansel and Gretel were so terribly frightened that they let fall what they had in their hands. 
The old woman, however, nodded her head and said, Oh, you dear children, who has brought you here? Do come in and stay with me. No harm shall happen to you. She took them both by the hand and led them into her little house. Then good food was set before them, milk and pancakes with sugar and apple and nuts. Afterwards, two pretty little beds were covered with clean white linen, and Hansel and Gretel lay down in them, and they thought that they were in heaven. The old woman had only pretended to be so kind. She was in reality a wicked witch who lay in wait for children and had only built the little house of bread in order to entice them there. When a child fell into her power, she killed it, cooked it, and ate it. And that was a feast day for her. You see, Witches have red eyes, and they cannot see far, but they have a keen scent like beasts, and they are aware when human beings draw near. Hansel, she threw him into a cage to be fattened up, and each day he was to stick his finger for the witch to feel so that she would know when he was fattened up enough for eating. Each day, Hansel, knowing that she couldn't see well, would stick out a, an old chicken bone to fool the old witch. However, the day came when the witch was ready to feast no matter what. Early in the morning, Gretel had to go out and hang up the cauldron with water and light the fire. We will bake first, said the old woman. I have already heated the oven and kneaded the dough. She pushed poor Gretel out to, out to the oven, from which flames of fire were already darting. Get in, said the witch, and see that it is properly heated, so that we can put the bread in. And once Gretel was inside, the witch intended to shut the oven and let her bake in it, and then she would eat her too. But Gretel, she saw what the witch had in mind and said, I don't know how to do it. How am I going to get in? Silly goose, said the old woman. The door is big enough. Just look, I can get in myself. And she crept up and she put her head in the oven. And then Gretel gave her a big push and drove her far into it and shut the iron door and fastened the bolt. With the witch dead, the children looted the house and escaped by way of an enchanted duck, which carried them safely across a river. And after they had walked for a short time, the forest seemed to be more and more familiar to them. And at length, they saw from afar their father's house. And they began to run. They rushed into the parlor and they threw themselves round their father's neck. The man had not known one happy hour since he had left his children in the forest. The woman, she was dead. The children shared the loot from the witch's house and they all lived happily ever after. The Lord is immediately acquainted with the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is destroyed. So the woodcutter, nice guy who goes along with a plan to kill his kids twice. Now some of us, we have relationship baggage with our parents, but Hansel and Gretel, they have a boatload. The writer of Psalm number one breaks the world into the, the righteous and the wicked. The witch and the stepmom, no question the story, wicked. But the woodcutter, 
What say you? The psalm writer says something interesting to me. The righteous person doesn't follow wicked advice, doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the disrespectful. Maybe the woodcutter would have been a good guy, a, a righteous person, if he hadn't have chosen to surround himself with the poison of a hateful, angry spouse. What is the effect of what and whom we choose to surround ourselves? I love post-apocalyptic post storytelling. I, I do. Battlestar Galactica, The Road, even The Hunger Games and The Walking Dead. But here's the thing. My family will vouch for this, that if I binge too much on that kind of literature, my outlook starts to change. I start to change. And I've heard people say the same thing about watching the news, doom scrolling or what happens when they spend too much time on Facebook, video games. So what about you? How do the stories, the people, and the news that surround you, how does that affect you? And don't pretend that it doesn't have an effect. That's, that's just lying to yourself. Are there things in your life that you stand and sit with, that pull you down a dark path. You know, the story, the fairy tale, never says how the stepmom died. How dark did the woodcutter get? I guess it comes down to this. Each of us makes choices each day about whom and what we surround ourselves with. And yes, I, I know, there's a lot that we don't choose, too. But our choices do matter. They affect us mentally and they affect us spiritually. So let's be careful, mindful, of what and whom we choose to make part of our lives. Because it matters. It may be the difference between a happy life and one that is not so much. You pray with me. The Lord is our shepherd. We lack nothing. God lets us rest in grassy meadows. God leads us to restful waters. God keeps us alive. We are guided in proper paths for the sake of goodness. And even when we walk through the darkest forest, we need fear no danger because you, God, are with us. Amen. Next Sunday, we're going to be blessing our neighbors in need offering, an offering that we make as a church community every year.
Much of what we, what we offer that Sunday and for this Sunday as well goes to put roofs over kids' heads. U.S. News and World Report had a couple statistics that really stood out to me. One was that the average life expectancy of a homeless person is only 50 years. 30 years less than the average in our nation. And the other one is this. Of the kids living on the streets of our cities, 42% of them are LBGTQ. There are many church communities, even now, that are open and affirming. We have a special call to compassion. So I hope that you will make a Neighbors in Need offering this year to give to this offering and to the ongoing support of our church community and all the ministries that we're involved in. You can now go to our worship site at colonialucc.updates.church. And thank you for everything you do for other people. Pray with me. Holy Spirit, work through us for the compassionate care of all people. We acknowledge that there are many people who fall through the cracks of care. Give us the eyes to see them, the hearts to help, and the hands to make it happen. Inspire our work for all our neighbors in need. Amen. Having people in your life who hold you in prayer, that's a blessing. Having people in your life who will make sure that you never live on the streets, that is a blessing. Having people in your life who just call on you to check in, that is a blessing. This church community tries to be that kind of blessing for people who identify as colonial church and for those who don't. May we always reflect God's grace and love, and may it be heard in the prayers of the people as we come together in this time of worship and offering. And so after each prayer, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and can you pray it with me wherever you are right now by saying, hear our prayer. As the search for missing children in our, you know, begins this week in Search KC, we pray for those who are lost to be found. May God's Holy Spirit guide this important work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this past month, we've been holding many women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. We've had a lot of those, and I don't know why that's the case, but it's definitely the case. And so for all of those women today, we ask for God's Spirit to be with them with healing and strength. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In our community's continuing prayers, still in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, we thank God for the healthcare workers and the teachers, for all that they continue to do in the name of compassion. May God's spirit be with them always. And as we experience an epidemic of gun violence in this nation, we pray for God's spirit to empower us to change this broken world and end the needless deaths caused by this plague. And we pray for caregivers and for those living with dementia. May they receive the respect and the love that they deserve. And we pray for anyone who is living in the shadow of mental illness, and we ask for God's light of hope to shine. For those immigrants and refugees who are far from the land they knew, we ask for safety and compassion to come from Christ Church. And for the loved ones in our lives who are with cancer or other ongoing life-threatening conditions, we pray. For Craig Rowe, Jenny Cosgrove, 
Ken Werney, James Fuller, Sean Bolter, Lisa Lucas, Dean Keeney, Karen Fogelsong, Kathy Hellwedge, Andrew Wood, Nathan Green, Clive Griffiths, Cindy Russell, Rebecca Francis, Gwen Toll, and our conference minister, Edith Guffey. May God's strength flow from our prayers to them. Lead us not into temptation, because we can find that on our own, and deliver us from evil. May we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What are you feeding your mind and your soul? How do the people and the, the stories and the news that you choose to surround yourself with, how do they affect you? Are there things in your life that you stand and sit with that pull you down a dark path? You're never alone in this. And if I can ever be a source of encouragement or a blessing, please reach out to me. Please let me know. There are some pretty incredible people in this church community. Some who've gained power through experience and some in pain. Know that you have people who will stand with you on your journey. And that's our walk together in Christian love. And each week we make a covenant promise to continue that journey together. And so let's do that now. And if you're not at a point where you feel like you can make these vows, that is perfectly fine. Please receive this covenant then as a blessing and a prayer that someday you will join us. We covenant with the Lord and with one another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in Christian love. We seek to worship God in spirit and in truth and to love our neighbors as ourselves. With God's help, we will honor Colonial Church in our conduct, support its program, and extend the influence of Christ throughout the world. Our time of worship is now over. But our service to get out there and to be a blessing, that continues right now. So go in peace and live your life passionately. And love faithfully and celebrate. Celebrate every moment of life that you have from now until your life's finale. Because our God of resurrecting grace goes with you and in you always. Amen.